Hello and welcome. This is Rufalmonger, my friends. In today's video, we're talking about team positioning in the King of Fighters 15, specifically who goes where on what team. This has definitely been one of my most requested videos since the King of Fighters 15 has come out. So we're going to go over basically everyone. Now, we're not going over every single character in exhaustive detail because we already have one two hour video about characters on the channel, right? But we'll give you a brief idea of where everyone should be going. And now that said, here's the list. So two things off the bat. One, if this was all you're looking for, well, then here it is. Thank you very much. Maybe leave a like on your way out. And secondly, take this as a suggestion. If you very much believe that one character should go in one place or you want one of your characters to go in one place or the other, do not let me stop you. In the end, this is just my opinion and my opinion only. So in this video, we're just gonna be going over this list and I'll be discussing various characters. Some characters will get more discussion than others. Some will just be very quick. Others I'll jump into gameplay real quick to explain my decisions behind my choices. Quick reminder in that the main thing about positioning in the King of Fighters where a character should go point meter or anchor is basically how well they interact with meter. Are they self-sufficient? Do they not need meter to do what they need to do? Then generally you want them higher up in the team position. And if they're much more meter dependent, then put them further on back where they'll have more meter to play with. That said, let's first jump into the anywhere category. These characters can literally go in any position and they will all do well and excel. The vast majority of them have amazing neutral, very self-sufficient combos. They don't need any meter to get the basics off the ground and still get good damage. And if you give them even a simple EX, then they'll do above average damage. And if you do give them a lot of meter to work with, they have a lot of bars, they scale very well having a lot of decent moves to do in neutral, like raw EX moves, and the ability to spend a lot of bar in combos and very easily at that. Not too much else to say. These characters will work well in any position you want to put them in. You can feel safe. They scale well across the board with or without meter. These are solid picks. Now for characters who should strictly be on point, it's really as simple as this. For someone like a Shermie, Shermie has amazing normals, she can literally win whole matches just off her stand heavy punch alone, and she can't spend meter that well. She basically has no use for meter in neutral. The super that is the best level one into the level two super opener is an inferior combo route to the main B&B combo route. And her only use for having a lot of bar is basically like level one, level two, and level three or whatever. Like, you know, just like everyone has. Same deal with Maxima. Maxima, if he gave more than a bar and a half, he wouldn't know what to do with it anyways. Like his main combo structure only needs the one EX and it's way higher than average damage. And if you add more bar on top of that, it doesn't really scale that well. Also, his biggest strength, once again, is neutral where he can abuse his guard points and you know poke people out of the air or win ground wars. And uh, when you're starting to find characters with a lot of meter and can start doing EX and have a lot of tools, that gets less valuable. He's strongest against people who have a less amount of resources to work with. Angel is another character that basically doesn't need meter. She only really uses meters to end combos, just like extra damage at the end of the combo with a super. Also, due to her unchain uh, mechanic, she builds a lot of meter herself due to just non-stop special moves, 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 moves over, over, over. So she benefits the most from just being up front, uh, building meter for other characters. And once again, if you gave her the meter, she wouldn't know what to do with it anyways. And Kula's game plan is super basic and effective. She has very good normal. She wins neutral very well. And she doesn't need much meter pass like just a single EX to keep a combo going. Once again, all these characters, if you gave them more meter, they'll find a way to spend it, but they don't really need it. And that's why they're best served up front. Now, point or mid, these characters are frankly just a little bit more versatile than the point only characters. They can play the no resource slash low resource game just as well, but if you give them just a little bit extra to work with, just a little bit more gas, they can also spend that meter pretty well. But neither do they need, you know, three bars or more to do their game plan. They are very self-sufficient, just they scale well with the meter given. Like Clark has great B&Bs, doesn't need meter at all, but if you give him just like an EX to work with, he has a very strong EX game plan. He has EX juggle anywhere with the tackle. He has EX grab, has more range than the regular grab. Hydern's main game plan is having giant normals, throwing sonic booms, and uh, effective flash kicks, right? 
So he doesn't need the meter, although if you give it to him, it's nice. And uh, his game plan has changed from before in 14. 14, he would have been an anchor character uh, due to how uh, the pinwheel super worked. But you can't get that in the same situations you could have before. So point mid it is. Everyone else but Mantenkun, just all incredibly aggressive characters. Their basic game plan is just rush down. It works. It's great. And once again, if you give him just a little bit more meter, he just scale very well. And Mantenkun himself, he's a zoner. He wants to hold back. But he has very strong EXs as well. So if you want to play the basic game plan, it works. But then EX Pillow is one of the best projectiles in the game. So having some meters to toss that around definitely helps a bunch. So for mids... You have a little bit of meter kind of guaranteed to work with, right? And these are characters that scale well with just a little bit of meter, but they don't need the world. Dinosaur. Good example is his EX Pile Driver. It's a great tool for him that you should always have at the ready because it is effectively an unseeable running bear grab. Unlike other, you know, styles of that kind of pile driver in other games, there is no warning. It just happens. So be able to threaten your command grab at a much further distance than usual is very great, especially because they're going to be blocking a lot because he has very strong normals that will force you to crouch and just deal with them, right? Someone like Whip. Whip as well. Whip is like your limb-based zoner, I guess you want to call it that. Whip kind of wants meter to work with, honestly. Uh, she's not going to be able to effectively keep people out as a point character. Like, her damage just isn't there. So when she gets you, she needs a little bit of snap to it. Shune, if this was King of Fighters 14, I would have put him anywhere, but I feel like he's definitely changed in this version of the game, that he doesn't scale well with a billion bars, and yet he's not quite as strong as he used to be just in neutral. So for now, I'm putting him for mid. And Dolores, newcomer. So obviously things are very subject to change with more discoveries over time, but right now I think mid is her place. Uh, she has a strong neutral game. She benefits from having some EX on demand, especially her EX teleport. Uh, but neither does she need meter to make her game plan go. Now, mid anchor is not a terribly complex category. These are all characters that want meter, but they don't need tons and tons of meter like the few true anchors we have. So as a mid, they'll start with at least a little bit of a bar. And if you put them as an anchor, then they'll start with more meter, right? And they all have big time combos. They all use meter incredibly well. That's really about the long story short. Give them one or two bars, they'll do good damage, and they have good options. A lot of these characters also have great neutral EX moves. And if you give them three, four, or five bars, well, then the damage really starts getting crazy. Like the above combo you're seeing right now. I know it's going places, but trust me, this is actually a real practical combo. If Ryo gets you in the corner with five bars, you're kind of donezo, right? But he doesn't need it either. He doesn't need it. It's cool, it's flashy, but he doesn't need it. He still has plenty of cool options on the table with just one or two bars. And much the same for the rest of these characters. They do well with whatever you give them, but they do need just a little bit to get off the ground. And finally, our true anchors, the people at the end of the team. There's only a couple of characters, and these three characters are some of the most meter-hungry characters in this game. That's why they're in the position they're in. Ash, well, I'm sure you've seen, uh, you know, the combo videos, all that kind of stuff. Ash, he is all about the big fancy combos and he needs the meter to get all the big fancy combos simple as that yeah he has a strong basic zoning game plan but if you're playing ash and you're not giving him the meter to do the fancy stuff you've effectively uh, sold the character short because that's where he really shines antonov probably pound for pound does like the most damage per meter spent in the game but the thing is he gets nowhere off the ground with the meter he has like no basic light hit confirm without spending bar for Ash, maybe you do him a disservice if you don't give him meter. Antonov, you can't get off the ground without meter. He's got some of the best tools in the game. EX Vertical Macho is one of the best moves in the game, but everything he does requires meter to make it work. And Mai's in the position where EX fans one of the best projectiles in the game, still destroys projectiles like all other EX moves, and it has the added effect of the fact that it bounces and causes more pressure on hit, so she wants to be pretty liberal in spending it. And she can hit confirm anything into a combo, and she can burn a lot of meter in her combos. Doesn't matter if it's up close, doesn't matter if it's far away, Mai can do it. Mai is very versatile with the meter, and she works best when you give her as much meter as possible. And that's the end of the video. So poor Chizuru, I got no idea. If you know Chizuru, please post in the comments below, I got no idea. And once again, this is not meant to be definitive, right? If you have a character you'd like to put in a different position, please, by all means, do not let me stop you. This is just my rough opinion on the matter. 
So that all said, just one more time to hit the hammer really home. The main thing about your positions in this game is how much meter do you want the character to have? Meter is effectively options. Meter is tools. Meter helps out a lot. But some characters, they just, even if you give them all the meter in the world, they can't do too much with it. And some, well, they can do the world with the meter. Anyways, my friends, that is the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. And go out and play some King of Fighters.